Quantum has a long history. We have been talking about quantum since the 80s and trying to build quantum machines since the 90s in March. D-Wave came out with their quantum supremacy paper, showing that there are practical problems that you can solve with quantum, which you cannot solve on supercomputers. Even throwing all the supercomputer in the world will not do the job. You can talk all you like, you can do all the work in the lab, but until it is in the hands of people, it doesn't become tangible. What we are building is the gateway to adoption and use of quantum computing. We have built the super platform, the chat GPT of quantum and supercomputing. We like to use the term supercomputing to describe what we do. We leverage classical CPU-based and GPU-based computing and combine it with various quantum computing architectures to deliver commercial value. Is it the goal to get a solution fast? Or is the goal to get the best possible solution? And there is a trade-off between the two, often. Based on the decision parameters, we come up with the optimal trade-off and we execute. You get the results, and then you should package the results in a way that they can be consumed by an everyday user. Someone who doesn't have a computer science or physics PhD. On top of it, it is a chat-based interface. And we this is why we call it the chat GPT of quantum and supercomputing. Our platform is powered by a combination of GPUs, CPUs, and QPUs. What it does, it takes a problem, it breaks it down. It tries to figure out how to use one of these stacks or a combination of these stacks to best solve the problem most efficiently. And then the rest of it, building the solution, deploying the solution, getting results has all taken care of by the super platform. Where quantum computers are good, are at modeling large number of scenarios and finding the best scenario among them. That's where quantum computing adds a lot of value because classical computing hits a bottleneck and a bit of information in the, in the world of classical computing is either a zero or a one. The, the power of quantum computing comes from the fact that you can capture both the states at the same time. In fact, you can even capture a combination of the two states. So you can you can have a qubit of information that is could be in a zero state, one state, or 30% zero, 70% one, or 50% zero, 50% one. And what that allows you to do in simple terms is capture an exponentially large number of scenarios with very few bits of information. So the easiest way to understand it is like, you know, capturing multiple pathways through a maze. So instead of going one path and then retracting and then doing the other path, you are executing on multiple paths at the same time, you know, and you'll do it faster since you're executing on multiple paths. So D-Wave, our partnership, it is grounded in practicality. It is grounded in commercial value, which is the part that excites uh, both companies. One example of a very concrete project, world's first consumer-facing application or consumer-facing product powered by quantum computing. So something a company built and then rolled out to their customers and they're paying to use the product. That is something we haven't seen. This product actually deals with coordinating the operations of autonomous machines at scale. Uh, in this case, particularly for agriculture, which was presented at Qubits, which is in use in production, and it is being paid for. Another example is our ongoing work on AI clinicians. We were reaching a ceiling of how accurate we can make those clinicians. And to break that ceiling, we are deploying D-Wave's quantum annealing. Uh, but then we have a relationship, a very strong relationship with NVIDIA. We are leveraging NVIDIA's uh, cloud infrastructure that allow us to access uh, cutting-edge GPU compute, as well as gate-based quantum computers. We have a robust set of partnerships that have helped us grow and uh, build the platform faster and commercialize the platform faster. The word optimization, industry uses it a lot, but industry doesn't understand what, what is optimization, what is mathematical optimization. I'll give you a very concrete example. You know, with the tariffs uh, coming, how does a business figure out what would be the impact of these tariffs on their supply chain and manufacturing? That is an optimization problem. How do you manage the operations at an airport in such a way that there are the least amount of flight delays? You know, these are optimization problems. How do we distribute uh, utilities through a network in a way to minimize losses? How do we control traffic flow in a city or in a, in a, in a province? And then you realize that literally every decision we make in, the, in, in our life 
where we're solving optimization problems. Mostly we do it through intuition, but in the business world, we, we need data and we need to back those decisions in science. Once people start using super, you know, from retail use to business use, we'll see more and more emphasis on adoption of optimization, just like we have today for generative AI. The one takeaway that I want selfishly from this is for industry and people to understand what it means to, to optimize, you know, in the true sense, and how you can achieve it using the computational technologies that we have access to today. What excites me even more than that is that we are putting this amazing technology in the hands of people. And what ChatGPT did in the hands of people, nobody could have imagined, nobody could have predicted. We are unlocking similar possibilities with super and quantum computing. And I'm excited to see where it goes. Like, like it's not just us who are gonna determine the direction of where this goes. It's gonna be the people that, that are gonna be using it. So I'm, I'm really looking to, forward to see where, where people take it as well.